Well, two weeks ago, it was Dr Dan Poulter, who left the Conservative Party as a Member of Parliament, has joined the Labour Party, but will not be standing for re-election. Defections do happen occasionally, but today was an absolute bolt from the blue. The Conservative Member of Parliament with a 12,000 majority from Dover and Deal, and remember Dover, of course, is there on the front lines. That's where the small boats uh, come in. That's where the people first get processed and in, in an issue that initially was a constituency and county issue, but is now a massive national issue. And the local MP, Natalie Elphick, has been deeply critical of the fact she doesn't think Labour really have a plan uh, to deal with the boats problem in any way at all. I think she's also quite sceptical about the Conservatives' plan. She is very, very much on the right wing of the party. And I can tell you, having spoken to local people, that the local Labour Party absolutely hate her. So how bizarre that Prime Minister's questions begins at midday and there Natalie Elphick is sitting in the row behind Keir Starmer. No one quite knew really what was going on. But later on, after PMQs, in an interview, she gave her reasons for now joining the Labour Party. Well, in 2019, the Conservatives stood on a manifesto that was very much centre ground. But under Rishi Sunak, they've abandoned the centre ground and broken many election promises. Meanwhile, under Keir Starmer, Labour have changed. And I think that change is going to bring a much better future for our country. And that's why I was so keen to join the Labour Party and play my part in bringing that important future forward. Okay. Uh, that is all complete and utter rubbish. Don't believe a single word of it. She is opposed to virtually everything that Labour stands for and has been for all of her relatively short time in Parliament. So what's going on here? Well, if you go back to the last years of the major government, there were defections, Conservative MPs joining the Labour Party. Do you know something? Every single one of them got looked after. Yep, they all went to the House of Lords. And I'd be very surprised if Poulter and Elphick didn't go to the House of Lords. She won't be standing for Labour in that constituency at the next election. Mr Tapp, who is the already adopted Labour prospective parliamentary candidate, will continue. So she hasn't done it for money. Uh, whether she thinks Keir Starmer can give her some kind of broader protection, I just don't know. But I think this really raises a lot more questions that it answers. I wouldn't be surprised to see quite a few more defections to the Labour Party, especially in seats where it appears the Conservatives are doomed. But this really is a funny one. And at the heart of it, as I say, is her criticism of the Labour Party for its approach to small boats, let alone to legal migration. So today, the Centre for Policy Studies has had a get together, they produced a report, and they're questioning publicly whether large-scale migration has delivered economic benefits. And this is interesting, because the narrative from all of the think tanks, from all of our leading politicians, has always been, especially the BBC, has always been that immigration is good for the economy. Well, the CPS are challenging that today. They're even saying it's putting pressure on housing. Who knew? And, of course, their star turn was the former immigration minister, Jenrick, Robert Jenrick. But here he was, on with Nick Ferrari of LBC this morning. Require Nigel Farage with a blue rosette. Is it time to have him back into the party? Well, I, I would not um, oppose Nigel Farage coming back into the party, but that's not our priority. He He's associated with a different political party today. What we should be doing is tackling the issues that the public care about and which uh, are leading some former Conservative voters to look elsewhere. And as I say, legal migration seems to be absolutely top of the list. It's funny, whenever it comes to this issue of... Immigration, be it legal or illegal, my name always seems to crop up. And here he was, later on, at the Centre for Policy Studies. What could the consequences be for the Conservative Party if it does not bring Nigel Farage and his um, fellow travellers back into the fold? Well, well, firstly, I've been clear that this is not a, an issue of any one individual or political party. I think that politicians and governments have made promises and been unable to keep them for the last 30 years. And we have to end that. 
one of the reasons I ultimately chose to leave the government was I didn't want to be just another politician who made promises on immigration and broke them. Some politicians are more culpable than others. Uh, I mean, I think, for example, uh, Theresa May, as Home Secretary, worked very hard mm. to bring down levels of net migration and deserves credit mm -hmm. for the work that she did. There were mistakes made in the immediate aftermath of Brexit, and the system that was designed was a very liberal one, which has had a number of negative consequences. Negative consequences. Well, as I said here in 2021, what Boris Johnson effectively did was open up the borders to the whole of the world, not just the European Union, as it was pre-Brexit. Well, I'm pleased that people are finally catching up with the fact that this is having a massive impact on people's quality of life. I don't even think this is about economics. This is what I said on Question Time back in 2016. Look, whichever way you cut this, Immigration is the number one issue in British politics. It has been for some years. People are very upset. They're very unhappy. They're seeing the impact on local schools. They're seeing the impact on GP services. They're seeing the impact on housing or the inability of young people to get on the housing ladder. So that's why it's the number one issue. There are reports that say that we're better off with mass immigration. There are some reports that say we're slightly worse off economically with mass immigration. But to me, there's an issue called the quality of life. And I, and I think that matters more than money. It's about thinking our kids and grandkids can have what we've had in terms of access to local uh, health care, in terms of our kids getting into local primary schools, in terms of our overall quality of life. And that, David, I think, matters more than GDP rising by okay. 1% per well, annum. No doubt we'll do this. And this whole debate, and yes, I've been very much at the forefront of this for many, many years, this debate will intensify on the 23rd of May. Yes, in a few days' time, because we will get the annual immigration figures. I have no doubt they will be staggering in their size of numbers. So let me ask you, because pollsters ask, well, what is the number one issue in British politics? And I put it to you that it's immigration. Because it isn't just about the numbers coming in, it's about the impact on whether you can get your kid into a local primary school. It's about whether you can get onto the housing ladder. It is actually about whether you can go and meet a relation and know whether the journey will take two hours or four hours because our population has risen by 10 million since Tony Blair came to power and over 85% of that is directly because of immigration. Your thoughts, please. Is it the number one issue or has Farage got this wrong? Farage at GBNews.com.